the Department of Immigration has surrendered lawyer Miguna Miguna's passport a direct, as directed by the High Court judge Luca Kimaru. The passport, however, cannot be used again by the holder for travel after it was mutilated by the Immigration Department, which says the law demands its destruction as soon as the holder is deported. The passport number A116842 issued in March of 2009 was confiscated by immigration officers on the 6th of this month and perforated as soon as Miguna was deported to Canada. According to Immigration Director Gordon Kihalangwa, the perforation of the passport is a standard procedure once a holder is deported. A letter written by Ngatia and advocates appearing for Kihalangwa with the passport attached to were handed over to the court after justice. Kimaru directed the Immigration Department to surrender the passport of Miguna within seven days. The court also declared Miguna's deportation illegal and that the declaration by Interior Minister Fred Matiangi was null and void. And U.S. Ambassador to Kenya, Robert Godek, now says he is not interested in meddling in local politics. Speaking in Cabernet Baringo, where he paid a courtesy call to the governor, Godek says that the U.S. is all interested in development matters, issues touching on war against corruption and helping address problems relating to health and insecurity. Godek has been accused by the opposition of attempting to co coerce it into submission to the leadership of President Kenyatta. Last week, the opposition organized a demonstration against the envoy where they also called for his removal as the U.S. ambassador to Kenya. The United States is a partner in Kenya, and we are continuing to work cooperatively with the government and people of Kenya to address the issues that need to be addressed here. There's a full range of challenges, and I just spoke about some of them, and I look forward to continuing that partnership. Really, the cancer of corruption in Kenya be stopped, that this problem be addressed once and for all, so that people can receive the goods and services that they pay for through their taxes. These things are so very, very important. And um, the United States is absolutely committed to working with the government at the national level, the governments at the local level, and the counties to doing that, to dealing with these sorts of problems, and to continuing to build the country that the people of Kenya themselves want. All right, uh, Godek was speaking after visiting Stanley Kiptis, the Baringo governor. As I promised, I have a panel in studio, Gabriel Muduma and uh, Joseph Simeha joining me this morning. Thank you for coming, gentlemen. Thanks, and that's a good point to begin. Yeah. Uh, Godek now says that uh, he's not interested in meddling um, in the local politics, uh, yet he said that uh, Raila Odinga should recognize the leadership of Uhuru Kenyatta. He's now denied and uh, sort of says he was misquoted. That's not what he meant. But he said I uh, should recognize that leadership. And I begin with Simeha on this. Um, your party, Nasser, accuses him of meddling in the local politics. Where do they draw the line? Because they have interest in this country. Where do they draw the line and say, now this is touching on the national politics. We shouldn't comment on this. They do have interests, and uh, of course they ought to express their interest even on national politics, except when this expression of interest becomes extremely partisan and even coercive. He can deny, but he said that in a statement, he said that on, and captured on television several times, mm -hmm. insisting that... A joint uh, statement where there were 11 envoys. Yes, yes. and uh, he's been the foremost, mm -hmm. and insisting that uh, NASA leadership must recognize Uhuru Kenyatta as the beginning of anything. Did he say now, must? Well, he said that many times. Okay. Um, I only hesitated to say other things that he may have said that I have not captured in the, in the, in the mass media. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's why we've called him to order that, look, we, uh, we understand the fact that America is a, a partner to Kenya. American envoy is extremely important in what happens in the country, and, the, and he has to express their interests um, and hope, but we do also know that the expressing their interests is um, really just that, their interests, not our interests. Okay. So there has to be a place where they stop. And uh, they will not do that unless we stop them. What, what if what's happening locally is affecting their interest in the country? Of course, yeah. that is why they would express their interests. Uh -huh. When they realize that when we have a clean government, they will not get contracts behind uh, you know, people's backs, behind uh, the rule of law and so on. When they realize that um, they will not make us a, a client state in their so-called war against terror and, and so on, um, then they, know, they, they begin now to make noises. Okay. Um, anything that, uh, you know, I have known that anything that is good governance, democratic and so on, that insists 
on rule of law and doing things according to our rule book, um, where it, it um, contra contradicts their partisan interests, they begin to attack that, and that is their problem. That is Godek's problem. Plus, even personal interests, we've seen it with the previous uh, U.S. envoys. Mm -hmm. So what, one thing we know for sure is that Godek, yes, <laughs> represents the official position of the American government, but does not represent the position of all Americans. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, and uh, Gabriel, do you agree? Do you agree with him uh, that uh, this is uh, interference and coercive move? No, no, no. And by the way, uh, it's not only Godek. I think the State Department from uh, the White House actually issued uh, a directive, and they said, you know, we recognize, uh, you know, the Kenyan Constitution and what the law says. And as a matter of fact, they are also taking cue. Uh, from the Supreme Court, you know, which actually uh, verified uh, the results of October 26th. So really what they are doing, they are quoting from the Constitution, or does the Constitution stipulate? And that's all they said. Follow the Constitution, follow the law. If we are to follow the Constitution and follow the law, then Godek is right by saying, you know what, albeit the fact that he does not want to meddle in the, in the local politics, the truth of the matter is they have interests. And okay. those interests should not only be seen when, you know, they are discussing about multinationals and like my good friend Semaka is saying when they are talking about contracts, hang on a minute. How much do we get from these guys? How much do we get from the United States? And let, let's not forget, apart from the scholarships and everything else that we receive as a country, they have been on the war front. I mean, they have been very supportive, apart from the economic sector itself. Right? They have been very supportive in some of the programs that we run in this country. Okay. One of them being you know, the HIV and AIDS, you know, they, serious money has been pumped in. So as much as we would, you know, want to talk about local politics, nobody interfering, I think there is a point that they are making. And that is a point that should actually legitimize what we are talking about today. Th that this, is to follow the constitution. This, 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 the politics of the country is uh, very divisive. Right now, the country is split right in the middle. We can't deny that. And um, uh, America, what you're saying, quoting that uh, they recognize the election of President exactly. Kenyatta yes. as a leader legal election, you know, they recognize it. But still, the question is, uh, must he show his hand in it? By, for example, in the statement saying that uh, Ray Rodinga should recognize the presidency of Uhuru Kenyatta, can I, why should he be the one to Can, can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? Yes, go ahead. Uh, and, and this is something that we like doing half of the time, and I don't know why we do that. Uh, Raila took flight from Nairobi, went to the U.S. Chatham House, or to the U.K., left Chatham House, went to the US, okay. looking to get a voice in America, went around, spoke to so many people. What was he looking then? Was he not soliciting for support? Okay. When that support did not come, and it was actually encompassed, you know what, we cannot break this. We are going to read what is in the Constitution. He came back, albeit the fact that he did so many town hall meetings in the U.S. Okay. All right? So it is erroneous. And again, sometimes I find it divisive. I mean, our politics are as such. But uh, it is wrong when somebody refuses to hear your side of story just because they want to stand with the truth. Okay. All right. Okay. So I, I think I think we should we should make some sort of balance. All right. When it comes to um, First of all, it's um, it is not true that um, Honorable Raila Odinga it says what he says about God and, and NASA, not just Honorable Raila Odinga, because he was denied support. No, we, um, NASA has a lot of support. You heard me say earlier, whereas. Um, Godek, as an ambassador, represents the official position of the U.S. government in Kenya. Uh, and for now, that is him, nobody else. He does not represent the, society, the American, American society. And there are other voices. There are other you know, voices that yield power in that um, nation that are listening to the truth and are seeking to know exactly what is the problem with Kenya. Um, ordinarily, in, in uh, diplomacy, you begin by going with what your ambassador says exactly. until and unless you hear alternative voices, and that's what NASA is providing when we go on the national and international stage, is to say the truth that is being you know, put down by Jubilee with the support of people like Godek, uh, British High Commissioner, and so on and so forth. Okay. Yeah. I, I'd like to hear more about uh, what the protest last week uh, that I attended on Friday achieved, and if this is the reason of retraction, in spite of the fact that this uh, exist in black and white, what he said last week. But I, we understand the Nazis finally have issued the strike threat and uh, they've issued a date for the strike. Let's listen in briefly just to understand what exactly this is all about. As slaves. But Nazis also must start stopping to be to allow to be employed in those kind of contracts. When we go on strike, they're allowed to be employed, to come and, uh, and, and kill us a strike. After one year, they come back to us. We want, we want to be employed. We are being paid 17,000. Why did you allow to be employed in the first place with 17,000 shillings? 
They should not also allow that to happen. Lastly, we want to say that there is serious security issue in this country. Everybody knows that. We have teachers who have been killed, some northeastern areas. We have problems in Mount Elkhorn. We have problems in North Rift, North Rift of security. We have problems in northeastern. We have said that we want the national government and the county government. I know the issue of policy is the issue of the national government. We want the national government to start with immediate effect. The current Minister for Health, the Cabinet Secretary for Health, Madam Cecily Kariuki, we, we have seen you are a very intelligent minister. You are very active. We want you to uh, call all stakeholders within the health sector so that we start working on comprehensive uh, uh, health facilities, security policy in this country. We want the police to be deployed in all health facilities in Kenya to offer security to our, to, to, our, to our patients, to our health workers, and any other person who happens to come to those health facilities. We don't want these cases of insecurity to continue. I am telling the president he must come up and stamp his authority. We are tired, this thing of Mount Elkhorn. Eh? Just people come and start killing people in a, in, in a republic 50 years after independence. Kenya is not a failed state. How will you do one goes to Inji Sikumoja? Now, Tawan Avil and Tararua, you are Kora. Nitamalisa, you are Kora. I cannot be the president of Kenya. I have the army, I have the GSU, I have the police, I have the Nutrition Police, I have Nyumbakumi, you have the Wanainji, and yet Kuna Wakora, Wanakuja, Wanawa, Wanainji, wa Kenya. Like what happened in Mount Elkon. I cannot allow as a president. I cannot allow that. Today, Mount Elkon in Gekwe Nanuka. Those who want to cry should cry, but President, we fanya kazi. Kama mutu anawua mananji wa kawaida. Apana show masi to a person like that one. Mutu kama huya anakuja kwa boma na uwa mutu. Mimi naambia we rise. Mimi naunga mkono. Fakie hiyo watu kapisa. Pereka cheshu huko maundeli kunu nangoja nini? Swaka hiyo watu. Apana wacha mutu nakuja kuwa mananji wa kawaida. Na we ni rise. You come to my house and touch on my child. Then you see how sita angoja polisi kuja. Mimi nakatafuta we peke yako. Hata kama ni kwenda kulota punduki somale ni taleta. But if you touch my child in my home, I will not go to the police. I will fight you. Need... All right. A very interesting gentleman. I can see the excitement out of that, you know. Seth Panyaku this, seems to know what to do, you know. Th that's not excitement. That's foolish talk. Yeah. You can't talk like that. But he I seems mean, to know what you, to do. You know what? You know, Kenya, <laughs> it's, it's like you said. You know, it, if it was so easy, uh -huh. you know, the bandits are there, the Wakoras are there, let's go get them. Uh -huh. This country is run by laws. Mm -hmm. Come on. You, you can you just... Think, <laughs> please. <laughs> you see, covering such things... So, oh, so, I see, yeah. man. Yeah. Sometimes I wish I knew what Seth, Seth Panyako is smoking it's, before he comes I'm to this. the press conference. No. For us, he's just frustrated yeah. by what's yeah, yeah, happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. I, I, I guess so. I guess yeah. it's... Uh, probably frustration and then he has to express himself yes and like he that. has to show a common front with the, the other nurses you know <laughs> yes yeah. Yeah. but, but it's sad enough for. what happened in mount elgon it is it is yes. absolutely i mean any incidents and we've had more than enough uh, of our share in this country any incidents of insecurity that uh, you know end up with losses of life massive losses of lives mm -hmm. and are unacceptable mm -hmm. um, in terms of principle he's absolutely right in what he's saying yeah. that the government must guarantee and that's what uh, we pay taxes for that is what uh, we accept to surrender a part of our sovereignty for so that the government can pro government that is there at that time mm. can protect okay. everybody secure their you know personal security property and so on all right so, gentlemen yeah. let's wind up this discussion on godek and uh, yeah. Simeha, last week on friday um six days ago we had a protest that was taken right uh, at the doorstep of the ambassador that's at the embassy and then um a week later five days later there's this retraction not that he didn't retract immediately even over the weekend we had statements from the ambassador retracting and saying that um, it was taken out of context and uh, to make it even look uh, good uh, it was a common a joint statement so to single out godek out of all their envoys that sat and the uh, did a joint statement is not uh, is neither um, good for him or for his image. You know, we, we have been um, very, let me say, magnanimous, very cautious, very diplomatic, and I say that we, I, I mean NASA. I say that because I know uh, we know where it hurts. We know where to touch to inflict pain on Godek and whoever he represents. But many times our leaders have said no. Hold it fast. Hold it fast. Let's give them benefit of doubt. Hold it fast. But. Um, when um, uh, uh, you know different groups within uh, the NASA coalition feel that he's going too far, like putting a finger in, uh, in our eyes, 
We said then we must, we must push him back. And we know that um, when we expose this to the international media, when we expose this particularly to the American public, not just those he communicates to through uh, uh, cables and so on, but to the American public, it begins to hurt. We okay. have been aware of that all the time, but it's just our leaders that put people in check and say, you know what, give him benefit of doubt, let's give him some space and so on. Well, but what, it reached a point when... What, what would you that. have wanted Godek to do in the face of everything that was happening in the country, Simeon? Look, this country has uh, the Tanzanian High Commissioner here, Ugandan High Commissioner, Botswana High Commissioner, the High Commissioner of South Africa, even the, of Somali, even of uh, the Seychelles, the Ambassador of Seychelles. It, I could keep counting. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they are aware of what's happening. They That's are the Commonwealth. Yeah. Because you mentioned mostly high commissioners. Well, yes. Okay. Commonwealth. commonwealth, but yes. plus even other African countries okay. of the ambassadors from the AU. From the, okay. Who it should hurt even more than anybody else as African countries. They are aware of what's going on in Kenya. They are not blind to what is going on. But they give that space that um, I presume, I must caution myself there, that I presume that they give the space that, okay, you Kenyans handle these issues where you need us as through the existing structures like ESC, which unfortunately is a moribund thing, but say the AU and so on, where you need us, then we can deliberate on this thing. Okay. But to come in as an ambassador, like any other ambassador, just to be, take advantage of the uh, strength of uh, you know, their military, their, their economy and so on, because they make many other states, clan states, and to, to, to abuse that, to insist that we must recognize the person he recognizes is unacceptable. Okay. He must leave that to us. Okay. You, you see, to the, to first of all, let, let's 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 be very careful when we say uh, Godek is recognizing anybody. He's not doing that. I mean, he's recognizing what the constitution has recognized. So this is not Godek. And the other thing that we have, you know, we must accept is this: when an ambassador speaks, this is the voice of the administration. In other words, it is the voice of the American people. As much as we will want to dissect and say there are several groups within you know, the, the American setting or the American fraternity where you know there are other people who will feel this when it's presented to otherwise. them. And, you know, but the ambassador is the representative, the rightfully representative of the American so people it's, it's, through the it's administration. It's purely Trump so, who was speaking. And, exactly. And that's why it did not even start with Godek. Let's be fair on this. It started with the State Department. They are the ones who said and recognized, okay, the Kenyan constitution that said Uhuru or President Uhuru is a valid elected president coming from the sum of the ruling at the Supreme Court, all right? So that is done and dusted. If we are to bring in African countries, I mean, the president, just the other day, he was in Ethiopia, all right? Uh, he's traveled back and forth. And this, I'm not saying in any way, shape, or form that he's trying much to legitimize anything. No, he is the president. He has been guaranteed that well, by no the Constitution. One, no one but you know that. what? Yeah. Now, we can sit here, yes. we can yes. sit here, <laughs> we can sit here, mm -hmm. and do all the shenanigans that we want to talk about, but it's not going the, to change. Okay. I'm sorry the to say that. fact is a fact. Fact is a fact. And that's why I like bouncing on facts, because guess what, Ken? They'll never change. Okay. It doesn't matter how we subject them to. They'll never change. Mm -hmm. Closing up, mm -hmm. and I think this is, uh, we need to talk about this a lot. Uh -huh. What but, is but, the but, Africa? What before before the you bring things? Africa in, talk to us about what the effect of that demonstration, because he says they know where it hurts. So that is exposing Godek to the international community. You see, and he begins to I, cow I, I, and I, crawl back. I, I, I think I think what uh, NASA were hoping, and probably this I can say without fear of contradiction, they were hoping uh, the likes of Godek and the likes of the other ambassador would keep quiet. But guess what? They have people in Kenya who look up to them for answers. Okay. And not only what we call the normal, uh, you know, uh, Muzungu Americans. So many Kenyans. Okay. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll, ask, I'll ask my producers there to All try right. and play the pictures from last week on Friday as we discuss that yeah. on the protest. So there are so many people who would like to know what is American stand as a vanguard of democracy or, say they, or so they say. They need to speak. Yes. Okay. What are they saying on this issue? And guess what? Mm -hmm. America will never get out of that loop. They will go to the Constitution. And that is why if you look at the State Department, they kept pointing. It is not us who made that decision. It is your Supreme Court. The same Supreme Court that nullified the election of eight 
uh, 8th, 8th of, of August. August. They yeah. are the same who have said this. So why are we not going to take this? So let us, let, um, and again, here I call on fairness, facts and truth. All right. Uh, be, because it's been said, Simeha, that if you take a neutral position at this particular time, then you're not a friend of that country. So America has decided not to take a neutral position. They started it, to speak out. There's know? a difference between being a friend of a country and a friend of individuals in that country. You know, a friend of a uh, usurpers uh, of power. Uh, they, I, I, I do not deny, in fact, I confirm what uh, Gabriel is saying here. When you hear God speak, it is the official voice of those in the, in, the, in the White House, in the Department of State, and so on. Just as it was when Mobutu was president of uh, Zaire. It was the Amer official American voice that killed Lumumba, just as it is currently in Ethiopia. Even as you see the Prime Minister run away, as the Ethiopian people demonstrate to demand for their rights to change their own country, that government is supported by the Americans, uh, by, by Godek and those he represents, the likes of Godek and those he represents. So indeed, many, many times, the voice of the Department of State and White House gets it totally wrong. Look at Israel and, and the Palestinians. It is their vo the voice of the official voice of the Americans that is supporting the killing of Palestinians, that is supporting apartheid in Israel and in, in, uh, in, in Palestine, official voice of the American government. No, I don't deny that true. at all. So that is what we are saying for us. We are not shy to call them to order. Yes, we are a poorer country compared to them, but I would like, I, I would like us to take pride not in the fact that American is, Americans are giving us millions of dollars for H, against HIV AIDS and whatnot, I would like us to take pride in the fact that we are financing that ourselves because we can. Okay. We can finance our own health sector. We mm -hmm. can finance our own education. We shouldn't accept to be a client state just to, uh, to fight America's dirty wars so that they can throw uh, you know, um, you know, bits of bones at us and say they are financing our, our, our economy. No, we don't have to do that. Okay. I know countries that survived till now who have said no to, the, to, to Americans. It's if they're doing the right thing, as partners, we totally welcome with open hands, not but not when they determine for us who our leaders are. You see, okay. the funny thing is, one, I do not think, I do not think the U.S. has actually determined who our leaders are. Okay. I do not think so. Americans did not vote in this election, in the election that we just came from. Uh, America did not present any judge at the Supreme Court. There was no American judge. It is us Kenyans who this came over. So America is just supporting. And please, let's get it right. And I hope our viewers are getting this. Do you right. remember the ambassador? American, Do you Am remember the American ambassador who was branded the rogue ambassador? <laughs> Edward Hempstead. No, Edward Clay. <laughs> Oh, yeah, so many have been. So many. He was the British. Yeah. Oh, uh, Edward Clay. And Grant, British. Yes. But there was one who was also a rogue ambassador, uh -huh. uh, uh, Smith Hempstead, who they said yes, once in the opposition a yes, lot. Yes, uh, yes. But but you see, the 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 narrative we are we are talking about today, Ken, uh -huh. is what my good friend Semeka is saying that they have helped us elect our leader. America has not. And you, know, you see. That's why I say every time you bounce on facts, you will always be on the, on so, the, on so the best this side is, of my history. Point is, this so is what, what, what Godek has done? Yes. No, what it's Godek has done? He has communicated a position, a position that we uh -huh. actually put forth. Okay. It is the Kenyan courts that actually put that off. It's not Godek. All right, gentlemen, I think we close that discussion. We have a lot to discuss. What we Fairly predictable. Let's discuss this briefly. Fairly predictable. Look at Rwanda, Paul Kagame, yeah. and how he governs Rwanda. Yeah. And uh, you expect that. Rwanda will be corruption free. I went to Rwanda and I was speaking to a banker friend of mine. Um, he told me that uh, uh, the Kigali Bank, he told me uh, every government service in Rwanda, if you are uh, arrested uh, on the streets uh, of Kigali, you are fined, the money is paid directly to their central bank account. Mm -hmm. You come with the receipt and show it. If you have a court fine, you don't pay it in court. A central account that is right. managed by the government you know so it's very diff difficult for people to get money out of rwanda mm -hmm. and of course the suspicion is rwanda i don't know you're a cop he's a cop <laughs> you don't know you don't know who you answer yeah, yeah, to i don't know yeah. who you answer to yeah. so this is expected look at somali mm -hmm. More than 20 years of civil strife. You yes. expect them to be the most corrupt country. I wonder where Sudan is. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I think, I, I think what we are getting from that index, uh, speaking of Somalia, I think I expect it to be there, not in a bad way. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, like I mean 20 years of they, civil strife, yeah, yeah, more than 20 been, years. There'd be no government. You don't expect nothing. No, no, actually, I, 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 I don't. Uh, but you see, where we are, I believe the fact that we've gone... Uh, two, points, two points, man. Two points. That is not, that mm -hmm. is not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. You know, 
going in the right direction is a good thing. Talk, direction talk to us about the point, the reason why it's only two points. Kimeo says it's because of lack of political goodwill it, and punishment to people who are caught. It could because I've argued, I've argued, Ken, I think on this uh, media broadcast, that Kenya, we are not short of laws. We are not short of a strong penal code. They are there. The thing is that people break the law and think they'll get away with, with impunity. It, and they think they'll get away with it. But one thing I'm liking is that we are starting to understand that systems, mm -hmm. effective systems, mm -hmm. can actually uh, help us in the war against corruption. Like what you've just said about Rwanda. Now you go to apply for your driver's license, guess what you're doing? You're paying into an account. You're not paying somebody over the cashier. When you go for your passport, but we still so pay systems, for it. We still pay no, for it. It is for you. <laughs> wanting, the table. It is Facilitation. You, facilita it is you Facilitation. Wanting, it is you wanting to do that because I renewed my driver's license. I didn't pay anybody. I went to oh, yeah. Your passport. Then I, you don't pay at all. Exactly, yes. that's what I'm saying. All, yes. You see, the minute we understand that we have systems, mm -hmm. effective systems that can actually help alleviate this risk of corruption all the time. Okay. Because back in the day, like you're saying, it would be under the under the table. table. But even e citizen is but not now, free. Remember, mm -hmm. late last year or early this year, when they said uh, the e citizen. Uh, personal group mm -hmm. have been earning a lot of money from it, billions, and uh, the central bank even money. said, you know, mm -hmm. we don't know where this money is going, so it's no, not it was, also no, free. No, it was an free agreement that wasn't, uh, mm -hmm. that wasn't done. Or someone was eating, was eating from it. <laughs> <laughs> so they wanted just, to put it in. Let me just say, in, actually, in for many reasons, including the ones Gabriel is, uh, is expressing here, mm -hmm. uh, countries are corrupt as a consequence of uh, poor leadership. It begins at the top. In fact, he said when people think that they can break the law and, uh, and uh, walk away free, not think. It actually happens in Kenya. You don't even have to think about it. That is what happened. It is even encouraged by government itself. When government disobeys court, a court order, when government breaks the law blatantly, what stops uh, any, any other person, we like to say small people, not just small people, any, any other, other person, person. Mm. to actually know that, you know what, in Kenya, I can actually okay do this to break the law as and get long as yes. you are on the right, in quotes, right side of things politically. So when you look at the failure in Somalia, when you look at what we every, every so often celebrate about Rwanda, there are things to mourn about, mm -hmm. but there are also things to celebrate, celebrate yes. in, in Rwanda. It's directly attributable to the style of governance, to the, um, to the um, firmness of the leader, beginning at the very top, to the decision and conviction of the leader that I do not want this in my country, it will not happen. But when you have a leader who uh, you know, blows hot and cold, when you have a leader who wrings his hands or throws his hands in the air, when you have a leader who is surrounded by the biggest thieves ever in, in any country in this world, you don't expect that uh, you will do well in terms of uh, corrup corruption perception index. And, and, and of course, <laughs> how punitive uh, the punishment is also uh, acts as a deterrent. I remember Paul Kagame arrested his own brother and threw him in. So, so it's not corruption. even the, 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 the gravity of the punishment. Okay. It is the resolve of the leader. The, the punishment may not, may, may could be death mm -hmm. or not, but it's the punishment, the, the, sorry, it is the resolve of the leader. Let me give you an example. Okay. The, laws didn't, the, the laws that punish corruption in China didn't change just the other day. They've been there. But Xi Jinping comes into government and he says, hold on guys, we will implement these laws. Mm -hmm. And he begins to implement those laws. Mm -hmm. And to kill people, of course by law, not, not just to kill people, but by law. He begins to very strictly insist on implementation including punishing people very high up in the Communist Party. Yes. L and, and then and it, works begin to, it works, it works for, them. for them. But yes. it's, corruption is reducing in China. It's but it's because of the let resolve let of the leadership. Yes. Let, me, let me tell you something. And it's something that I've observed. One, uh, in the history of this country, and uh, I, would, I would like to believe, you know, uh, I think that's the route Paul Kagame took, uh, was to uh, actually look deep into the people before we talk about the government because can what is or who is the government is it me is it not me and you we are the people who make up the government we are the nation all right so we cannot begin and again this has been you know taken erroneously we cannot begin by pointing up there when we know there are systems that exist in the history of this nation i have never seen a president bring names into parliament and say hang on a minute and say you have said this is what has happened. I leave these individuals to the structures of law to deal with them. All right? The judiciary is right there and parliament. All right? When institutions, albeit the fact that we say are independent, when they fail, 
why do we again move back and say you are to blame while it is us who went out again and voted for the same people? Okay, this is where it starts to get dicey. We can just look and say, oh, the president, you are to blame, you are to blame. But look at us. When there is, and we know very well, there is a system that we need to operate under, that we know if we follow this, which has been put by leadership, okay. it will provide these results. Why are we so keen to go against that system. As, if, far, if, if, as much as we talk about laws, you know, they are there to be followed and we agree. But look at how quickly okay. the Mwana Inchi, you know, falters on following that particular law. I know, and if we go back to the discussion of the names that were presented to Parliament, Gabriel, yeah. we won't finish. We'll <laughs> need, we need yeah. uh, two hours. That's, that's a second. No, 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 I asked that we need yes, four hours. Have, no, 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 what I was doing, have, what I was doing, I was pointing, pointing at what to happened a leadership the result. that is keen to fighting it's corruption. It's very true. That reminds me of something. I need to go to another discussion, but it reminds me of something that I wanted to comment about. Um, yesterday or on uh, Tuesday, we had uh, the DCI director, Kinoti, and we had uh, the IGO police running to court and say, you're risking our jobs by doing this. this uh, you know, they complain, they want those orders lifted. Yeah. I want you briefly to talk to me about the possibility of suspending sentences. That is um, because we have seen top government officials yes. in contempt of court mm -hmm. because they know what you're talking about. Yeah. They don't, d don't obey the laws. And yeah. they no, I'll sit pretty, and that's yeah. what you're talking about. What um, remains for us small people to do if mm -hmm. top they don't obey the laws? So, talk to us about possibility. Do you think if sentences in this country were suspended so that the IG leaves the office and Boynet is thrown straight to jail, you know, mm -hmm. uh, Kinoti leaves, he's thrown straight to jail, would, would that act just briefly? Do you think that would work for us? It, the moment you begin to knock on the big heads, it does work. Okay. The examples we gave, you, mm -hmm. uh, someone, I think yourself or him, talked about uh, Kagame's brother. We talk about yes, the Kagame. party mm -hmm. uh, officials high up in the Communist Party in China and so on, all over. The moment it begins to touch those who are perceived as the holy cows, it begins to work. It sends a chill down the spine mm -hmm. of the ordinary criminal. Okay. Um, uh, in, in this country, you know, we, I, I, I need actually, particularly Gabriel, to differentiate the duty, the difference between the duty of care, duty of responsibility allocated to a public official and that to an ordinary citizen who is not in public office. It is always higher. And the higher up you go in the public um, office ladder, the, the higher, the heavier the responsibility and duty for you to lead by example. Okay. That is why we will always point at people like the IG, as you say, director of uh, investigations, the, the, the immigration and so on, that when they fail, it's not the same as the ordinary person on the street failing mm -hmm. because they are failing you and I. They're not just, they're committing crimes in our names. Mm -hmm. That is why they ought to be punished. And if court were to be courageous enough, not just to issue suspended sentences, but to actually punish them for contempt. Mm -hmm. the but next even if you punish them, Gabriel, they go nowhere. The, they, the they next person pretty. will think and, twice. And, uh -huh. and, and, and or the good, next person and, will yes. think twice. And a good case scenario, and I'm sorry to take you to, you know, to take you on this avenue. You see, when, um, and again, I'm, I'm sorry to take us back there. You see, when the court uh, said, go back and do another election, and some people said, no, I won't go, and the election won't happen. Contempt number one. The Supreme Court right there. I need to teach him should some have, law. It should have a law minute. Contempt. That, that, that's not contempt. Uh, no, 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 no. Gabriel, that's, that, that, that's not contempt. Let, let, me, let me first of all you know, tell no, you what I think. Okay. Let me tell you, no, no, let let me tell you first of all what I think, and then you, you can, you know, you can, you can, you can help mm. educate the okay. masses as you want Thank to put you. it. Thank you. Obliged. Uh, it is a directive that came from the Supreme Court. Yes. Are we, we agree on that. And somebody decides, no, in fact, I'll do the direct opposite. Yes. Are you telling me the Supreme Court would have just, you know, folded their hands? Somebody has refused, number one, to follow a directive and not to leave things as they are, but to cause havoc and to implement what I would call a sadistic element of ensuring nobody will vote. Yet, the Supreme Court has ordered something. That is one. Secondly, if we are looking at a directive and an order coming from the highest court in the land that says this man, President X, has been legally elected. You have gone against that since the court pronounced itself to that. Is that not contempt? <laughs> Explain to me what contempt is. Yeah, I would like to do that. Please so that, do. So that Please I, hope, do. I hope you can be educated for Please today. do. And you are our killer. <laughs> By the way, you didn't know Ken is our killer. No, he doesn't. I have, he doesn't. I, I have explained to you something. Let us now hear what he'll tell us. Contempt, Explain to contempt us. of court is when, a, and you know court orders are... No, 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 explained. You said you're explaining. I'm beginning okay, to explain. Go, go on. 
calm down. Have a, have a glass ah, of water. Calm. <laughs> you have your glass anyway, of water. Calm. In the interest of time, okay. contempt of court, my brother, is when an order is directed at you. And yes. orders are normally directed at specific yes. parties. Yes. Directed at you. And that party acts in contempt, refuses to obey that order. Which they refused? So, in, in, the, in the Supreme Court decision of, um, repeat, of to repeat elections, an order was only directed at the one IBC. party. The IBC. IBC. So, if IBC refused to do it, the election, exactly. another election, they would have been in That would be contempt. Yes. Mm -hmm. That would be contempt. Yes. Mm -hmm. But anybody else boycotting, even advocating against it, not contempt at, at all, all. At all. Really? Refusing to recognize. Yes. Refusing to. Uh, the, the, the order was specific then, to the IBC to conduct another election. Lawyer. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Refusing. The listen, lawyers. because you, you you need to be you need to be a bit disciplined when if you I'm listening. Plan, I'm listening. You're heckling. No, I'm not. <laughs> 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 when the court a court of law says that so and so is the president or so and so is the attorney general or so and so is well, and I as a citizen decide that I'm not going to recognize that I'm not. You're not in contempt of the I'm not obliged by law to recognize him as a president. Mm -hmm. That is not contempt. But, 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 not, but the AG refused to vacate office and there's another AG. That's contempt. That is contempt. Yes. Or the AG, the AG is directed, mm -hmm. the AG, the police and so on are directed to bring Miguna to court. And you refuse to bring him. That's contempt. That is contempt. Yes. When the Kajiado court says bring, take him to Nairobi court by 3 p.m. and they fail, they are yes. holding him somewhere, mm -hmm. that is contempt. And now that brings us to the discussion of Miguna. Yesterday, Kihalangwa return the passport <laughs> it was perforated yes that's that's the, that's, that's the rule even at the bank you take yeah. your old atm they perforate yes. they destroy yes. it yes. and uh this coming late in time you know it was it's they've been asking for it for a long time mm -hmm. then suddenly it's taken and it's accompanied mm -hmm. by a statement mm -hmm. from fred Gatia, you know mm -hmm. yes yeah, yeah, yeah that first of all shouldn't surprise you where that statement is coming from it will explain to you I think you should look put that in context and you understand where these orders are coming from but let me let me tell you it's not true what you just said that that is the the way things are done that perforation mm -hmm. at what point was Miguna's passport Kenyan passport seized and he explained it okay it was seized when he was being sent out by forcefully forced out into exile not even deportation as people say that that was not deportation that is forced exile at that point a court process a judicial process had begun and they were uh, Kihalangwa and the rest of the guys at the immigration were aware, police were aware, DCI were aware, everybody was aware. The moment a, a, a judicial process starts, you do not interfere with anything that is of material evidence with regards to that process, that case, until it's determined. A passport, an ID card, what, a, a birth certificate, very central to what was happening, the case that was already in court. So actually they are in contempt in co of court to perforate that passport because they knew that there's a judicial process that has begun already. Had they done that before a judicial process began, that would be different. Okay. But the moment a judicial process begins, you do not do anything that may prejudice a decision that a court of law may make later. So, so in that process. today this has prejudiced uh, Miguna because he Obviously. can't hold another passport until he applies for a new for one. A new one. And not yeah. only okay. Miguna, yeah. it, has, it has brought contempt. It is contempt. Mm. It, is, it is like spitting in the face of the judge. First of all, okay. he, he has the passport you wanted. Let's see what yeah. you I, do. I, I, I don't, do even, want, I don't yeah. even want to discuss how that passport was, was, was gotten in the first place. I mean, okay. we've had everybody telling okay. us how it was gotten, you know, for the late Kajuan. Okay, you know, forget about that. What we want to know is... Oh, how it was obtained in 2009. Uh, 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 okay. uh, uh, exactly. Yes. And you know what? Uh, Kihalakwa actually uh, made his points. He said, immediately, it is the norm. Once you're deported, to me, it remains a deportation. To mm. him, it's forced exile. You know, I, you know. Mm. Uh, once you're deported, the passport is uh, perforated, just like your visa. Mm -hmm. You know, the way they do it, if they find out that uh, you, you you did some, uh, it was not uh, obtained uh, 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 lawfully, or they find it was obtained in a fraudulent manner, they perforate it. So here, you have a passport that's perforated, and I believe, Ken, what you should do the next time, please call Kihalangwa here to explain this, because I believe he's the only person who can explain this better. No. He's repeated no, himself it's, to it's, it. It's, 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 it's the law. You see, mm -hmm. the way I've read it, mm -hmm. the way I've read it, I am taking cue from him. Mm -hmm. I mean, he is the immigration official. And he's, gonna, said, he's, and he's, he's going to be a PS, court. right? Yeah. Yes. And he's even wrote to the court, mm. this is what we did. Even when he was talking about Orengo and Jimmy, he said, these guys went and showed my officials, uh, even though I had not received that court order, he went and showed my officials uh, a, a WhatsApp uh, picture. 
And they know very well that's not what you present. You need to present. There's a format into which that particular material is, uh, is, is presented. All right? But when we got it, we allowed. And, you know, they traveled. So what Kihalangwa is saying is that we have done what is the norm and mm. is according to the law. So, you know, here we can say he wasn't deported. He was deported. But the fact remains, the passport has been perforated. Let's take the next course. But, but do we agree that this was a judicial process that had begun? Uh, uh, the judicial, pro oh, by the way, the judicial process that had begun had not had nothing to do with the passport. It was the an illegality that he had committed. Goodness, no. Uh, that, uh, can, see, can, let me let me just explain the, this. The, let, 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 let me give, finish. Give let me finish. Oh, yes. Miguna was not caught or taken to the police station because he had an illegal passport. Jesus. No, Miguna was taken because of an illegality he committed in the swearing in. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. When. He was told to be presented in court. The immigration department had not been served, but they had known, they had found out that he had actually, he was possessing an illegal document. And that is why the man was deported. I am reading what has come from the immigration. He can say, oh my God, but that is what we are told. Do, and then do, he was do you think the, based on that. Do you think the judiciary, I mean, the immigration department would have waited until the case against him, which why, is an illegality, as you say, why, is concluded, then listen, they deport him? Wh why wait? We are told the man is in the country illegally. How many people, can? how many people are deported on a daily basis? Okay. We don't know that. I suppose Jubilee knows that. No, but, no, no. Uh, we do. They are deported some, every time. Sometimes they are can deported you, every time. Sometimes Both you guys here take me through a lot of pain. But anyway, this is important for <laughs> public education. Um, even as we sit here, what exists on official record is that the deport purported deportation, deportation was Ill is not what is illegal, null and void. Secondly, the purported withdrawal of his with citizenship is illegal, null and void. But you cannot even withdraw a citizenship. You cannot. Them. You cannot. That's why I'm using the you word cannot. purported. Purported, yes, you cannot. As we sit here and mm -hmm. argue, mm -hmm. that is the official position confirmed by the High Court. That is until, and unless, and until. Mm -hmm. If it happens, it's appealed and changed. But before that happens, mm -hmm. as we speak here, that is the official position. And court was only confirming what is fact and what is law. Okay. Um, by the time the, the, of course, they lie to us in official statements. By the time they were <laughs> moving, they, they were, by the, but this is the government I'm talking about, government policy. And so on. By the time they are moving Miguna to Kajiado and back and forth and so on, they knew exactly what mischief they were planning. Otherwise, when a court of law tells you do this as a government, you do it, you don't hesitate. If you have, you do it, and then if you disagree with that court of law, you challenge it. You go back to court. You go back to court to or challenge a higher it. Court. A higher, or a higher court yes. to challenge it. But first, you obey, and then you go to a higher court to challenge it. So th this is, these are things for which we don't, we don't need to be haggling, as if we're haggling about uh, political positions and so on. These are facts of law. The government made a terrible, terrible mistake by going against the law, uh, abusing the rights of a citizen whose citizenship you cannot. He is in asking any way. Why, why wait? Why wait? We, you're in the country and, legally. And, and also, why, why, why and, did and you also, want them to wait? Let him just answer why they needed to wait. He says, why you, wait? You have to wait because he was not in this country illegally. That is his country. It is not the government that gives you citizenship. Mm -hmm. The government only gives you documents like passport, ID card, a birth certificate, and so on in recognition of the fact that you are a citizen or to facilitate travel or to facilitate official transactions those documents are not the ones that confer citizenship. upon you uh, citizenship. citizenship the fact but that citizenship confers upon you this the document the moment you are born i have children mm -hmm. who, who small kids who don't have any passport any id card okay. my friend they are citizens of this of country, this country. By and birth. nobody By can birth. take away By that birth. let me yeah. tell you you yeah. see yes. sometimes I, you see the illusion of knowledge sometimes actually make can make somebody look, you know, cuckoos. And the reason why I'm saying this, my good friend Semeka knows very well that prior to the promulgation of our constitution in 2010, Kenya did not allow dual citizenship. It is written. And I heard the former CIC uh, 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 coming, out, that coming out clearly. That is very and true. he mentioned, mm -hmm. and he said, it was known world over, we were not receiving dual citizenship. And I remember when I was in the US, we got actually a memo stipulating the very same thing. There are things you do, you need to do mm -hmm. with the immigration department mm -hmm. to ensure that it is now covered and it is put in your record. Miguna knew this. Why didn't he do it? All right. So there is no way you can tell me you are going to uh, 
you, you're going to break this law so that you can make this law right. As you I, are breaking this to fix this. I, it I cannot happen. To, to, until he presents himself okay. to the knowledge that Kenya prior to 2022 did not hold you a citizen and he did later and did he come forward to fix that which was wrong. You cannot move in with, with, with something that is broken ensuring that it will you know, rectify itself later. So Miguna had a duty and he would have played it. How many other Kenyans have done that? I know hundreds who have actually uh, gone, who are dual citizenship holders, and they went through that process. Renounced and renounced and yes. admitted. Okay, yes. I, I have a, we, we have to wind up, but I have uh, further questions, about two questions, then we wind up. One, prior to 2009, mm -hmm. that was the position. 2010, right. the new constitution allows for dual. Yes. We know that citizenship is not conferred by a, a passport. It's conferred mm -hmm. by birth. Right. Right? By birth. Right. Or, uh, and that cannot be revoked. A citizenship attained in any other manner can be revoked. Absolutely. But not by but no, by let me, no, 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 no. This hang on a minute. Law. Hang on a minute. Let, let me just finish. Okay, right. This is by law. Mm -hmm. You can never deny someone citizenship by mm -hmm. birth. Yes. Even if two Canadians come to Kenya and give birth here, yes. that is a Kenyan citizen right. by birth. You can right. never, you can never deny them and say your parents are Canadian. Mm -hmm. That's my first question. Mm -hmm. 2009, mm -hmm. Miguna comes back. There's a coalition government. There's a prime minister. Same, same government of mm -hmm. Kenya. Same immigration department headed by Utiano Kajong and all. Miguna worked for the government mm -hmm. and the prime minister's office, mm -hmm. and uh, he even ran for positions in this country mm -hmm. uh, with the same document. He was cleared by the ESCC, mm -hmm. the DCI, Certificate of Good Conduct. Mm -hmm. He was cleared by the IBC. On the basis of this documentation, a week before he left, he had an, a, a Kenyan uh, driving license, the new generation one, mm -hmm. issued by the same government. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, he swore, he swore, and Raya, he swore Raila in, mm -hmm. and they realized this is not a citizen of Kenya, mm -hmm. you know? And then secondly, in obedience of court laws, when the court ordered Mm -hmm. You've talked about obedience to the uh, rules right. Right? right, and laws of the right. country. When the court ordered mm -hmm. that Miguna be produced in court, mm -hmm. there was a huge round mm -hmm. from the container depot to Kajiado mm -hmm. to Gidungori, mm -hmm. all those police stations. Mm -hmm. they, they did not obey the court orders. Right. Yet, you tell Simeha mm -hmm. that there's need for obedience of court. Where do you draw the line? By the way, I will, let me tell you, for something I will you not understand. move from people obeying the law. Uh -huh. that so has the court, to be, that the policemen, DCI, they were person, wrong. Every not to obey person, the laws. I'm not saying they were wrong or not. I am saying every person. <laughs> they have their own uh, narrative that they brought forward. Uh -huh. And they said it. But they should have obeyed him. the law. They said, when we released him, he was caught by the immigration. And I've seen this happen, not once, not twice. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you something. One, what you just said about uh, citizen uh, citizenship. Yes. Ken, do you know how many people, and I believe you know so many, People who've relinquished their Kenyan citizenship. Mm -hmm. You can actually lose your citizenship by you allowing or getting into a process to allow you to lose. For statutory, instance, statutory exactly, exactly. forms so, need to be yes, filled. There's a yes, exactly. And so order. don't put it as if you cannot lose it. You, you have own, people, you own yes, if yes. you decide. Yeah, exactly. If you decide. Exactly. But the government cannot deny you the right to citizenship. Where, you know that. Where, where I think it gets hazy mm. is when we try to legitimize okay. something that Meguna knows only too well. Mm -hmm. We've talked about the constitution before and after it allowed. Th that is there not in this case. That is not in this case. There, there are assets before he was in. There are assets of things that needed to happen. Mm. Secondly, when you talk about a passport, by the way, you know, many people don't even understand when you get your birth certificate, they say it's not proof of what? Of, of citizenship, right? Mm. Your birth certificate, it's written that. Yeah, so when, 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 when you query that enough, you start understanding why we are talking or discussing what we are discussing okay. today. When you gain, when mm -hmm. you gain an ID just because Miguna came with an ID or he was running for gubernatorial uh, position in Nairobi, it means nothing. Because let me no, tell you what, means, if it I means have the government can, agencies that can, are responsible can, slept on their job. Not only that. Yes, they not slept only on that. their job. They if didn't you, identify if that. If you get an ID fraudulently, mm. even if though it's issued by the government, yes. you still use a fraudulent process. It's true. I, Can I, I, need, I need to weigh in here. And we need to wind up, yes. First of all, yes. what is being said here is completely erroneous with regards to before 2010 and uh, after 2010. Before 2010 was a culmination of a, a, a process of liberation mm. that had begun earlier but picked in 2002 3 when we kicked Moy and Kanu out and put in an, a, a new government, which we had hoped and thought it would carry on with this form. But anyhow, those are other details. But 2010, when we gave ourselves by force of the sovereign power of the citizens, not government granting us, when we gave ourselves this constitution, 
it was like a, a liberation, a new freedom. Many, many Kenyans had been disenfranchised, kicked out illegally by Moi previously, including Gugiwa Thiongo and many, many others. They did not have a choice. Miguna Miguna did not go to Canada as a matter of choice. He was forced out. He didn't even have time to, he actually traveled on documents of another country. To, from TZ to Botswana yeah. and then eventually to, to Canada. Canada. So, so not Botswana, Swaziland, sorry. And then to Canada. So um, something that a, a, a citizen has been forced into can never ever be used against him. He, he did not at any one point renounce, personally renounce mm -hmm. his citizenship. And it Unlike, has to be for example, some woman I think from, from Krenyaga or Nyeri, who is now a senator in Australia, okay. right. who had to renounce her Kenyan citizenship herself. Not for the government to take it away, for her to do it herself. Miguna has never renounced his citizenship. And what will remain, it doesn't matter how many times we argue this here, <laughs> he no, will remain <laughs> a citizen of the Republic yeah. of Kenya yes, until and unless he personally renounces that, 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 that citizenship. That's, 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 that's the law. No, 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 that no. is the law. That, 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 that is wrong. Yeah. That is wrong because as far as I know, as far as I know, before you got another passport to another country, back then you had to renounce your citizenship. It is there. Ask him to go and read that. Before but, you got any other, whether America or Canada, I don't need to. Whether America or Canada, <laughs> you have to renounce. No, not, you not really. You can even the UK, you can just apply for it. I mean, how do you before, argue with listen, people yeah. before you can before, just apply for listen, it? Yes. Before Kenya yeah. allowed your citizenship, mm -hmm. you had to renounce your citizenship. But just like other countries like Canada, just like what we've Canada had, does not demand, just, just like Canada what we've does had, not demand, just like what we've Canada had, does not demand. Before they issue you a passport for Just you to like renounce your country, it so doesn't, many, it doesn't so many, so many of our sport mm. men, yes, it's who true, who renounce their citizenship, yes, and in gone, different countries, in different countries, but so Canada specifically does not require you by to the, renounce. So many countries, I agree with you. We, I agree with you. So if <laughs> this country you. allows and this yeah. doesn't, yeah. how? Where is the convergence? There's no convergence. Countries are different. It's Just like South Africa, I can, I have a visa, but they can't get both when your country says it doesn't recognize. It's okay. In fact, that's why I'm saying. That's why it's hazy. Yeah. And that's why we needed mm -hmm. people like in the CIC to come and explain. And they explain, explain I agree themselves. with you. I, I agree I with told you. you. Sometimes we, we have to wind up. Through a lot of pain. <laughs> <laughs> we have to wind up. To explain this is it's very painful. Pain. We, we, to we explain have, the law as it is. We have to wind up, gentlemen. I'm going to call you back to talk about this. <laughs> you should. This is a debate that cannot end. Miguna Miguna says he's going to come back to the country. He we will. still have a discussion on this. Will. But just as a parting shot on this, Canada does not require you. If I go and apply for citizenship, they'll not tell you, show us that you've renounced your citizenship from your country they no, don't no, no. they just give you so long as you want it and you meet the threshold canada gives you but kenya back then they exactly did not. kenya back that then, is yes. the point yes i agree with you it's all right thank you gentlemen <laughs>